Um, go ahead and turn to Mark chapter 12 this morning. Um, we're going to start a, a series. I, I would think that it would be really best identified as a sermon um, that just has, it's going to be way too long. I couldn't, I, I, by the time I got done uh, typing up one part of the sermon, the message, um, I was like four or five pages into it. So I thought, um, I, I kind of had a feeling that uh, the next th three Sundays are going to be at least given over to this. Um, but uh, it's something that uh, I actually, the the papers I've had on my desk since September of last year, I've just kind of, uh, I, I started jotting down some stuff that, that the Holy Spirit was talking to me about. And I just, it was never the time. I always look at it and go, oh, that's good. Uh, um, and then, uh, and then. This last week, the Holy Spirit really just drew my attention to it. And so that's where we're going. Um, but over in Mark chapter 12, it's a, it's a portion of scripture that we, we read uh, this section quite often. Um, in, in verse you know, 29 and 30, where, uh, where it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with your mind, your strength. And, and the second is like unto it. And, um, and, and as I was, and we're going to read through it. So that wasn't my reading through it. Um, but as I was uh, as I was going through it, I, I noticed a little setup here to set up where we're t our text is. Um, if you look in before it, um, Jesus starts this chapter off in Mark 12, um, teaching, and and he said, you know, he he spoke, spoke to them by parables. Certain men planted a vineyard. He, he's teaching a group of people. Um, in the process of it, um, verse 12, it says, and they sought to lay hold of him. This is the leadership of the religious group sought to lay hold of him, but feared the people for they knew, um, that he had spoken a parable against them. <laughs> they didn't know what it was, but they knew that it was against them. I don't know what you just said, Jesus, but I know it wasn't nice. Um, and, and they left him and went their way. But they were seeking, they're now looking for ways to, to nail him. I, I shared on, on a Wednesday that the early church didn't see any real persecution uh, from like the worldly governments um, until around 64 to 65 AD when Nero was, in, uh, was the emperor of Rome. And we, we talked more about that. We gave the details of that on Wednesday. So the, so the early church the, the, and, and Jesus, the, the main enemies they had was the religious crowd. So it, it, with us, it is that, it's very much that same way, is that some of the greatest opposition isn't the heathen. The heathen's looking for something real. The, the, the religion, religious is looking for something real religious. They're looking for form and formality. And, and so, uh, so Jesus is, his main opposition here is this group in the Sanhedrin, the, the leaders of the Jewish people who brought him, or who, who just wanted him to stop. Uh, they wanted, listen, if people quit going to your church, they're going to quit giving to you. And they're going to give to someone else. And so leave my people alone. And so when people started following Jesus, we know that when people first started following Jesus, they started actually sowing to him and giving to him and, and, and giving of their substance. And they weren't giving it to the church. They weren't giving it to uh, the Sanhedrin, to the Jewish group. And so their desire was they just did not like the fact that he was preaching this stuff and people were listening. And so they set out against him. And one of the first things they did here, verse 13, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I just want to show you this that I thought was really interesting. Is they sent unto him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to catch him, to catch him, to catch him in his words. Their desire was to see if he would say something that was wrong. I, I think it's funny how people pick on uh, people like Bill Johnson because they don't like what he preaches. And I would really like to know what they preach that is not biblical. Because again, I know they can twist things and they can say things that, that, that don't match up with their doctrines, 
But everything that Bill Johnson, everything Kenneth Copeland, those guys say is biblical and it's from the word. So you've got to you've got to disregard the fact that, oh, yeah, I know what the word says that, but here's what it was mean. Well, here, here, you know, it's, it's, it's strange to me. Well, that's the way it is. They're trying to find something that he said wrong, something. Um, when, when I was, uh, when Jesse and I were dating, um, her, I house set for her mom and her while they went out of town on a trip. And, um, and I went in there and I, I, I noticed a book that, that her mom had been given by a person that they were friends with. And it was called Christianity in Crisis. I don't know if you've ever read that, referred to that. Don't read it. But it's just a book of, it's a book about that thick, just of um, the, against the faith message, the prosperity message, any of that stuff. Anybody that ever preached anything like that. Um, it helped me out because I, was, I didn't have a lot of access at that time to a lot of faith preaching. And so I'd read their quotes and I'd go, oh, there was one with John Avanzini where I think uh, he said the reason Jesus said uh, the birds have their nests, the fox have their dens, but the son of man has no place to lay their head is because there was no Ramada inns back there. And of course they took it like, how foolish. No, he, Jesus didn't. And I, 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 start, I looked at it, I went over and read it in the Bible and I was like, oh, that's exactly what the reason was is because they had to sleep somewhere and they had to sleep on a rock. Um, and, but, but the other one was that I thought was so funny. And I think it's funny because it's just so stupid how dumb, if you're religious, you, you, you can get me. It was when they went after Kenneth Copeland and, um, and, and said that Kenneth Copeland believes dogs can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and I actually remember, I think I was in the sermon where he talked about it. And his literal quote was, this man was so full of the spirit, even his dog spoke in tongues. And we all laughed. But that guy took it as meaning that, that, that Kenneth Copeland said dogs. Well, that, that's just ignorance. So their effort is to find something that you say so they can twist it out of, well, that's what they're doing here. And so the Pharisee came, part of the Sanhedrin, part of the leadership in um, who Paul was a part of, um, he came, they came, that person, one person came with a question. And that question was, who do we pay taxes to? Remember that? We're not going to talk about that, but Jesus answered, perfect. Give to Caesar what's Caesar's, give to God what's God's. Oh. So he walked away ashamed. Then, the, then in verse 18, it says, um, the Sadducees sent a man. Then came unto him the Sadducees, which say there's no resurrection. I'm not going to deal with that too much, but they're another sect in, in, uh, in Israel, and they're part of the Sanhedrin. They're part of the leadership of religion. And he goes, they're like, we're going to bring it to you. You're going to really. And this is the one where if a man marries a woman, they don't have a kid, and he dies, and she marries the next brother, and the next brother, and the next brother. Whose wife is she in the resurrection? And, and again, all they're, they're not curious. They're like, how can we get him to hang himself on his tongue? But see, this third one in in where we're reading in verse 28 is literally the third attempt. It's the third attempt by them, except this time they bring a scribe. The scribes were very intelligent, highly intelligent. They were they 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 drew up legal papers. Uh, they, they 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 that was their biggest. The scribe they wrote stuff. Uh, there's more to it, but they also were uh, the the people that rewrote scripture. That if there was a writing from Isaiah that they wanted to write out, they would be the ones responsible for that. So highly educated, highly informed. They, they, they knew the law, the, not, not, not the policeman's law, uh, but, but the Jewish law. They knew all that kind of stuff. And so this guy, listen to what he says in verse 28. It says, and one of the scribes came, having heard them reasoning together. He, he'd, heard, he'd heard them doing this, and he's going... Oh, I'm intrigued. I'll, I'll catch him. I've got 10 opportunities to catch him. I've got 10, 10 different things that if he picks out one, I can hang him on the other nine. It's, it's kind of, which, which is the most important commandment, right? Um, he came, and so he came and asked him, which is the first commandment of all? 
Now, um, the, the New Living Translation, and I'm just going to read it. Uh, there's several I could have read, but it says, One of the teachers of the religious law was standing there listening to the debate. To the debate. To, to the debate. He realized that Jesus had answered well. So he beat the other one, so he was going to come in with something that they could hang him on. So he asked, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Now again, he wasn't interested in the answer. He wasn't looking to Jesus as the one that was going to give him a good answer. He was looking to Jesus as something to hang himself. What if Jesus said, oh, don't kill other people? Then the natural response would be, oh, so that we can steal? So we can lie? So we don't have to honor God? Is that what you're saying? If he'd have said honor God so we can kill people, that's okay. Are you saying it's not as important as that? And he would have hung him on his words. So Jesus, being full of wisdom, had the perfect answer. Um, and he said, the first of all the commandments is. Now, I want to I understand this, that, that Jesus answers this question. He gives them the top commandment. The top commandment is love. And, and that's, that's the fact, is that Jesus, Jesus said, this is it. This is the commandment, to love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with a heart, heart. With all your soul, hallelujah, praise God. I must be still in worship mode or something. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength is the first commandment. The second is like. And that is so important, and I'm going to throw this in here today, even though we're going to talk about it probably in two weeks. That word like is the Greek word homios, which if you understand, that's a, that the, the base word of homios is homos, homos, I guess, which we know what that means is the same as. So, so, so in other words, they weren't, they weren't different. The first and the second man weren't, weren't different. It was kind of like, Kind of like what, the, what he's saying is there's a 1A and a 1B, but you can't have 1B unless you have 1A. So, so the first part of it, uh, it it's, it's like um, in, in Mark uh, 4, I believe it is, where, where he talks about, uh, where he talks about the, uh, the, the planting of the seed. And he said, first comes uh, the, the shoot, then the stalk, then the fruit on the stalk. Uh, it's still, it's the same, it's part of the same plant. It's just the process is that you must love God first and then you can love others the way you love yourself. I really want to throw this out here too. And this is one I, I may figure out at some point to insert. I'm kind of inserting it now, understand this, but does he not say that another part of this whole thing is loving yourself? He does go, go there to that. Um, what is it, 31, 32, something like that. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, 31. And love, and the second is, is like, namely this, love your neighbor as yourself, as yourself. It's really interesting because we miss that because we talk about everybody else. And I'm not, I'm not saying be arrogant. Don't, don't get me wrong on that at all. But there needs to be a level of, re of recognizing who you are, what you've been created to do, what, you, what God has created you to be. And, it, and, and the reason a lot of stuff doesn't get done in the kingdom of God is everybody feels like, surely it can't be me. And God's saying, surely it is you because I created you to do those things which I've called you to do. But see, be beloved... It says here that the very top thing that we can do with our lives, the first, and it's not even the suggestion, it's the commandment. The very top thing is that we need, um, is that even though the wording there in verse 30 isn't specific, first commandment is don't, the, the, the 10 commands were specific. Don't kill, don't steal, don't commit. Don't bear false witness. Don't covet. You know, they were specific. And, and Jesus isn't specific on this. Because, because I believe that there's a whole lot more that goes into love the Lord your God than ten commands. I believe there's a whole lot more that goes into loving your neighbor than don't steal from them. Right? 
the, 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 the golden rule. Uh, whatsoever things that you would have people do to you, do ye also unto them. So it's a whole lot deeper in loving others than just making sure you don't kill them. There's some of us, man, we, 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 we tear up our rotator cuff, patting ourselves on the back because we didn't kill somebody. But I believe what God's saying is that it's a whole lot deeper than that. And by not narrowing down what part of loving God is essential, God is not saying that it's just this little picture. It is, it is so much deeper. That, go, go over to Psalm 18. It is, it is loving Him completely and wholly. I wrote down here, from your head to your toes, from the inside to your outside, from your physical ability to your psychological ability, loving Him with everything that you are. Heart, soul, mind, and strength. That includes everything. That includes, that includes your emotions. Loving Him with your emotions. I'm not going to get in there, but it means every little part of you, completely committed to Him. Notice here in Psalm 18, verse 1, it says, David, the psalmist says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Now that's pretty simple, isn't it? If you read on, we're not going to read on, John, so don't, don't get your finger too ready. Um, but if you read on, it tells all the things that Jesus did, all the things God did. Now, I know it looks a lot longer than that, the chief musician, there. I'm just down here at the bottom, and he said, um, I love thee, O Lord, by strength. Uh, go over, uh, check it up in the amp, Amplified Version. Check it up. Check it out. Hallelujah. Notice it says there, right down at the bottom, it gives you, the Amplified just says it really clear and really loud. I love you fervently and devotedly, O oh Lord, my strength. I like that. Fervently and devotedly. You got everything. Um, do the Passion Translation. Hallelujah. I was getting excited just learning this. Right there at the bottom. Uh, I am passionately, I passionately love you. Of course the Passion Bible said passionately, right? I passionately love you and I am bonded to you. I want to embrace you for now you become my power. See, we began what Jesus, what Jesus commanded us back there in Mark 12 to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength is essential. But when you start seeing the view of what that really means, I believe that, these, that this scripture gives us a great picture of it. And again, what a description from a man who was after God's own heart. He said fervently and devotedly. I, I, the, the only thing I can, I can think of here in, in even talking, the thing that keeps coming up to me, is you got all of me. There's not one area of my life that I'm holding back from you. I'm not keeping back corners just in case. I am totally, I am devoted, I am fervently following you. And then I love, I love, I love the passion where it says passionately, yes, but it says I'm bonded to you. I am connected to you and there's nothing that can take of me away. There can, there's nothing that can stop me short of fulfilling what you have for me. This is not describing a part-time lover. I just thought of the song. It's more than a fling, more than once a week, more than a hobby. David is describing an all-consuming, overwhelming attachment to his Lord. A love that consumes his heart, soul, mind, and strength. A love that consumes him. Go over, to, go over to Psalm 63. We're going to look at Psalms a lot over these next couple of weeks because David was this guy that understood the love of God. I'm not saying he didn't mess up. I'm not saying he, did, he didn't ha have his heirs. I'm just saying he understood the heart of God. And he understood the love and the connection to God. He was the one that was able to pen, um, uh, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. At the end, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell with him, in him, in his house forever. 
He was the one that understood that if I'm in the shepherd, if I'm committed to the shepherd, if I am passionately bonded to the shepherd, then I'm in a place of my prosperity where my cup runneth over, where goodness and mercy follow me. I'm in a place where, where literally everybody else, every other sheep in the fold possibly, and every other sheep ever is envious of me because of my connection to God. So he knew that. And so we're going to see that a lot. But notice in Psalm chapter 63, verse 1, it says, Oh God, thou art my God. Early, first thing when I wake up, early in the morning my soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water, to see the power and the glory. And, is, and so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus I will bless thee where I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied with morrow and fatness, with morrow and fatness, and my mouth shall, be, uh, shall praise thee with joyful lips when I remember thee on my bed. He started off this psalm by saying, early I'm going to get up, and when I lay down on my bed, I'm going to meditate all through the night watches. I am so committed to you that from sunrise to sunset, and from sunset to sunrise, my focus is on you. I am meditating on your goodness, on your love, on what you want me to do. That's loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Pastor, that, that's cool. You know, I love him. I said it. Is that enough? I, I, that was where I kind of sat there. Is that what does loving him with all that we have look like? And, you know, kind of like the song that we sang last week, Listen to My Heart, I think there's, there's a level we cannot cover this. It, it, it's one of those things that can't be taught, really needs to be caught. You're going to have to hear what the words I say and let the Lord do the rest inside of you. But I do believe he showed me a couple things uh, that, that's, that, that, that is really an identifier or how we consume ourselves with him. And we're only going to get through the first one this morning. Um, but the first one, I would just simply say it like this. This is, this is um, how does it look to be totally devoted and bonded to him? Is, is it more than me just saying I am? Right? And, and the first one I just simply say is love the things of God. Love what God loves. I would even, you know, you could almost say love the system of God. Love the ways of God. Um, love his kingdom. If he said it, I love it. I'm devoted to it. Not, not just like I'm going to do something. But if God said to do it, then I am passionately. See, here, 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 notice this. Notice this. Here's my love for God. Not just that I say I'm passionately, fervently uh, bonded to him. But that I'm passionately, fervently bonded to what he says for me to do. If he says it, I am passionately and fervently bonded to what he said. Not just to him. There's a lot of times we're like, yeah, I love God. And I, I'm not doubting that they like God or that they they enjoy God or that they that they really you know, I'm not arguing that they like the idea of God but and I I'm not I'm, I'm gonna be up here real quick here and say this I'm not saying they're not going to heaven what I'm saying beloved is that there is a place where we either want to just try to ride this thing out to get to heaven or we want to live in the fullness of what God said we could have. And you can love him, I believe, and just love him. But not receive a ton from him. And I'm, I'll just bring it up here right now. But we know in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it, it says, uh, God loves a cheerful giver. Oh, Pastor Thad, I think God loves everybody. And God loves even a person that gives 
uh, you know, just throws bucket chuckers, right? He, I think he loves them too, Pastor Thad. I think, it, I think that we're misrepresenting. No, we're not. Because that word love is not agape. It's agapeo, which means the act of love. God has the substance of love towards all men, but he's not able to reveal himself and, do a, and to do things for people that, that haven't learned the love of doing what he tells them to do. The love and the passion, the fervent passion of saying, Lord, if you said it, I'll do it. Hallelujah. Mm. Pastor Thad's getting excited up here. If you can't tell, just look closer. We have been raised in levels to argue thought. But our power comes from yielding and submitting to his system. Jumping with both feet and letting it consume us. He said, but, but, but Pastor Thad, then, then you're not consumed by him. You love him. You, you enjoy him. He's may oh 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 he's maybe Lord in your life, but he's not Lord of your life. What's the difference? Well, one's going to enjoy this agape, and one's going to enjoy just his agape. One's going to have his love, but one's going to live in the fullness of what he promised. And see, that's what God's, that's what Jesus is trying. That's what he came to preach. He didn't come to preach that we just go through the motions and that we go and we kill a bullock or a goat and, and, and we put it on an altar then we, and then, the, then the, uh, the high priest do the rest of it. He came to under, for us to understand that, that we can have fullness of life and enjoy the, 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 the whole thing rather than just this snippet of it where we're fearful that if we do the wrong thing that we'll be you know, we'll be out of his love. He wants us fervently and devotedly bonded to him. Go over to 1 John 2. Let's look at a couple things here. And I'm telling you, I don't, my message this morning is, is this. I didn't dare start into the next section because the next section is going to be big. The last section is going to be big, so this is, this is it. It's introducing this, and it's covering this first point of love the ways of God, love the things of God. Being, be, uh, I, I think I, I, I'm ha- going to have it up here in a second. It's not this passiveness. It's not this, well, God will still love me if I don't. It is such, it, it is such a consumption of God himself, that his words breathe life into you. And the absence of it, saying no to him, literally affects you. Um, I, I don't want to go here, but I'm going to. Go to Second Samuel. I, I want to show you something of the heart of, of David. The one that said... Um, Passionately and fervently bonded to him. Um, hallelujah. Keep my. That's one reason why I type things out on here is because I like to keep talking. And where am I at? Seven. Second Samuel seven. Notice this first part here. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house. This is David. And the Lord had given him rest round about him from his enemies. That the king said unto Nathan his prophet, How in the world can I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of the Lord dwelleth within curtains? It irritated David. It wasn't something, and now it could have been something God put in his heart. I'm not, I'm not going to argue that. But it wasn't something that was a thus saith the Lord. It wasn't a something that, that, that you do or die. But he, that, that, that it was kind of like, thou shalt make me a, a temple. Isn't this intriguing that it was David's idea? 
to make him a permanent residence. And this is the man that said, O oh Lord, I am fervently and passionately bonded to you, my strength. I'm not in this just for the game. I'm not in this just, if you, don't have a, if, if you don't have a home, how in the world do I have a home? Why am I the king of, 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 a, of a people living in a house that's better than, than the king of kings? See, that is passionately and fervently, is that everything in you is about God, is about doing what He wants you to do, is about uh, obeying His ways. Hallelujah. Go, go back to, to 1 John. <laughs> I did tell you 1 John at one point, didn't I? <sighs> Hallelujah. You guys understand, I'm not mad at you. I, 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 I told Jessica last week, I said, Jessica, how was it today? Because we're talking about the excuses that we can run into and that we got to. And I said, how was it today? She goes, it was awesome. It was wonderful. It's like, I wasn't sure. I felt like some people were mad at me. And she's like, she's like, well, the topic's one that can, it, she said, honestly, for me, it was kind of like an oh me type thing. It's like, ah. Ouch. Okay. Yeah. I I got gotcha. you. So he said. I'm, she said. I'm sure that's kind of what you were you were feeling and seeing in the in the sanctuary is a lot of omes instead of amens. I was like, yeah, because there weren't a lot of amens. There are a lot of oh goodness. So, but but that's. I, I don't want you to feel that way with this because this is not meant for us. This is meant. See, I believe in the natural. What we saw in Eastern Kentucky this week is what Holy Spirit's wanting to do in the supernatural in us in Eastern Kentucky. Um, I believe that it's a picture because how many know that there was a point over in that flooding where the people just, if they could just stop and yet the rain didn't listen to them. Right? And I believe that that's what Holy Spirit's wanting to do on us is to begin pouring out his glory, filling his this place with his glory and just consuming us, consuming our friends, consuming the city, consuming anybody that comes in touch with us, overtaking us. And, and, and when people are saying, <laughs> let us have a break, God goes, no, nope, we're going to keep pouring because there's been a people who are ready for it. And you can't be ready. And I, I say you, I, I'm talking about us. We can't be ready if we're still, if we're still 80% in, 70% in. Well, I give, a tithe of, I give a tithe of my money and I give a tithe of my time. The rest of it's mine. And, and, and I believe there, that's, there's a wrong thinking. I believe that God gives us 90% of our, of our finances to use as we desire. I believe that with all my heart. But... I keep wanting to jump ahead. But I also believe that when we're in covenant relationship with him, that he has access to all of it. I, I know we've taught that, that God gives us 90%. We're the Lord, we, know, uh, we give the 10%. He gives us the 90%, and he does. But because we're in covenant relationship with him, he has access to all of it. Um, yeah, I will, oh, wait, one of these things I'm going to go to, go to Psalm 37. These, keep your place in first John. We're going to get there. This, this is, I, I love this scripture and it's a scripture that, that annoys religion, but, um, I'm going to have to remember what scriptures I've already gone through. Can't you read my mind? Verse 4. John really has to work on that mind reading thing. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of thine heart. Now, I believe there's no scripture for t private interpretation. I believe that when you read something that, uh, that uh, Pastor Elisa can get revelation out of it, looking at it one way, Neil could get revelation of it, looking at another, Mike, uh, could, Pastor Mike could get a revelation of it, looking at it from another direction. That's just the way scripture is. God can use the same scripture 
and pour out different, different revelations for everybody. Well, that's kind of the way this one is. Because I believe that it clearly, without doubt, says that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Uh, the word delight simply means to yield and enjoy the things of. Be consumed by. So, being consumed fervently and passionately, bonded to God, delighting yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. He's going to be a rewarder of those who diligently want all that he has for them. He's going to pour out himself on those that want all of him. I don't like it when he says this and this and this. Oh, so you want to pick and choose the thing that would be fun or thing that would be good. But I do want his glory. It don't work that way. He's not pouring himself out on people that only are picking and choosing what they want of him. When you say, Lord, I'm going to do my best to completely go in all in, go all in on you and your ways and your system. And, and if, it's, if I'm in disobedience, it's not because I want to be. It's because I don't know. So, Lord, reveal it to me. Show me what I need to do. Show me the ways I need to go. Show me the things I need to do. Because if, if I'm missing it, I want to get on track because I want all of you. And God said when that becomes your heart. That, uh, that, that he'll give you your heart's desires. He'll be a rewarder. But I believe that there's another way to look at this that doesn't make the first way wrong. But I believe that when you consume yourself with him and, 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 and totally fervently and passionately bond yourself to him and everything he says, everything he does, when you get to that point... He will replace your old desires, the things that you used to think was important, and all of a sudden they ain't so important. Because now you're consumed with Him. Now you're consumed with His mind. The, the, the thing, you, you may have thought uh, A, B, and C was important uh, before, but now you're consumed with Him and you find out X, Y, Z is important. And A, B, C doesn't really consume you any longer. So he gives you the desires. He reveals to you the real desires of your heart. And see, I think there's so many people who never get in there because they're still... Listen, uh, Jessica loves the beach. She loves the pool. Probably too much. but, but she, And God, God loves you to get rest. God made nature for us to enjoy. So that's, we're not saying that, oh, I like to get some rest. Well, you'll never rest again. No, God, God wants you to rest. You need to be smart enough to, to rest. A lot of the, a lot of the um, generals of the faith, a, a lot of them faded out because they never rested. And their bodies broke down. And when their bodies broke down, Amen. And so rest is important. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, um, I don't know, just hobbies and just things that, that used to consume you. You're now consumed with the things of God. And you can still do the other things. I like to golf. And Lord, I, Lord, no, I need to golf. I need to get out there and I need to swing and get my muscles moving. I, I do. I, sh- I, I, shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't pull a muscle in my back uh, hauling cornhole boards in the, in the church. I, I, sh- I shouldn't do that. Um, so I need to get out there and do that kind of stuff. But you know what? When you're, when, when you're in the things of God, um, it, it can be hard to get out and, and to do the things that you always want, like to do. Because God... His beauty, His majesty, His love has consumed my heart. I am passionately and fervently bonded to Him. Oh, my strength. That's where my power comes from. And so I'm not leaving. I'm not moving. Can you, can you uh, kind of get an idea? I'm trying to think here. This piano is not a portable piano. 
Um, but you know what? We're not going to put it a whole lot in other places except for right here. We couldn't take this piano outside of, obviously, an extension cord. We couldn't put it in the middle of the floor, just being what it is, and, and go, all right, Jessica, jam. All you'd hear was, <laughs> that's all you hear. It'd be like, eh, okay, that's not very exciting. Why? Because it's bounded. In order to work the way it's supposed to work, it's bounded to an outlet. It's got to be plugged in. I couldn't take this into the middle of the field outside of being with a generator. Quit, quit arguing with me, everybody. I couldn't take it out in the middle of the field and stand there and get the best use out of it because it's bonded to an electrical outlet. It's got to have that in order to function, to, uh, in order to be used the way it needs. Oh, you should hear all the sounds. You know, we, we take it out in the middle of uh, middle of some field somewhere. We're all standing around. And I go, I go, Pastor Lee, you, you should hear the sounds of this piano. It's, it's got, it, you can play it and it can sound like a saxophone or it can sound like a trumpet. And it's, it's got strings. It can sound like violins. It can do all kinds of stuff. And she's going, oh, Liz, I, let me listen. To, I can't. And there's a lot of people that have all the, all the things that God has planned for you. He's got good and perfect plans. He's put inside of you an orchestra. He's put inside of you the uh, violins and, 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 and symphonies. He's put inside of you beauty and, and splendor. He's put inside of you all the blessings of God. Yes and amen. And he has stuck that right inside the middle of you. And you're stuck in the middle of the field with no outlet because you're not bonded to him. You're, you're doing your own thing out in the middle of the field. And that's not where you're supposed to be. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. You're, st- you're supposed to be connected to his ways, to his things, and to, ha- and to his kingdom. Are you seeing the picture here? If you want the sound, if you want the beauty to come out of you like it's supposed to, it's there. But we've tried too many, and I'm not saying y'all, maybe there's some of you that, that this would fit in, but, but a lot of times we just are not connected the way we, are, we need to be, and therefore all we see is the, use, the useless paperweight Oh, plug it in. Plug it in, Pastor Thad. I, I, I came home last night, and we, we'd had a great day with, with Sherry and Pastor Mike, and just, and just a wonderful time of, of fellowship. Um, I hate, like the Dickens, that my sister and my uh, dad passed away. Um, but if God brought one beauty, thing beautiful out of it, it's gave me two closer friends than I've ever had uh, in my life. Uh, Sherry was always my stinky little sister. And, uh, and her and Julie had good relationship, had a real close relationship, but I was just kind of a brother that was kind of, I was away to college, I was over here, I was there, and, and, but, but, I, but I value that friendship and that, and that relationship. So we had a, we're having a wonderful time last night. We get home and I sit down and Jessica immediately lays on the couch and I mean, she's out, she was out quick. And, um, and so I get up my notepad and I start writing stuff down and I'm like, and, and, and Bentley, our dog is laying right next to me on the floor and just licking and, uh, and biting And it's quiet. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to kill a dog. I'm going dog hunting, and then we're going to kill a dog. Yeah, rabbit hunting, rabbit season. I was getting annoyed, so I thought I got to have some noise. So I turned the TV on, and and it was dodgeball, the movie dodgeball. And I was like, that's eh, okay. I wonder if anything is on. And I hit I hit the guide screen. I'm not doing a good job of going quick, but that's okay. That's why I, told, I knew how long this would take. I hit the guide, and it wouldn't work. I'm going. Huh? making sure it's on the right thing and it's, it's not working. And so I'm stuck. I'm going to watch dodgeball whether I like it or not. And I thought there's got to be something. And, and so I just wanna, went up to the, to the box and hit a button, the reset button. I'm going to hit the reset button, did all the stuff, popped up, hit the guide button, it worked. But see, I, ha- I had all that inside of that receiver I couldn't use because I hadn't hit the right buttons. I hadn't done the right stuff. All I had to do was hit the right stuff. And now I had access to 200 channels that have nothing on it. 
I still watched dodgeball. <laughs> um, but, but there's a lot of us that have all of that in us. But we're just, we're just not devoted. We're not, we're not, and, and I'm not picking on you. I'm just simply saying you love God, but, but you're not fervently. We, we can be, I'll, I'll say it with me. We can not be fervently, devotedly bonded to everything he is, everything he says, no matter what. We're still in areas saying, but Lord, look at my situation. And God's saying, I understand your situation. That's why I've told you to do it a certain way so you don't have to live in your situation. There's promotions that God has had ready for some of us. And he's just waited for fervent, devoted bonding to him. There's raises that he's had ready for some of us. Now don't, don't, nine times out of ten when I say something like this, it's the people that are just tender hearted and probably are doing most things right that are sitting there going, it must be me, Pastor Thad, it must be me, I must be sinning horribly. And it, so I'm not saying throw yourself in the I'm just simply saying that we need to guide, guide ourselves. Sometimes we're in a, we are in a season of waiting. Annoying seasons. I get it. Pastor Mike, what, what, what month did you plant your garden? May? Um, did, you, did you get your fruit, first fruit at the beginning of June? First of Yeah, you didn't. You had to wait, didn't you? You kept going out there, kept looking, kept watering, kept, kept keeping the bugs off, animals off, all that kind of stuff. And still, probably after, I don't know, maybe a month, he probably still didn't have a whole, much of any kind of fruit. But just still waited. It's a stinky, stinky time of waiting. And some of us are just in that place where we're, we've sown the seed. We've done what's right. We, we're, we're operating what's right. And God's saying, man, I got something good for you. Don't stop now. Stay, stay fervently devoted in bonding to me. But we know... If there's areas in his ways and his things that we have placed secondary in our lives, that we've put our concepts, our ideas, and our thoughts behind his. And those are the areas I'm talking about. Uh, let's, let's look here. Let's go, go, to, go to Psalm chapter 1. It, can, can I read a couple scriptures here? Everybody's still waiting for me to figure out what First John says. Let, let's, let's go to Psalm 1 because we're going to go there in a second. But let's look at these scriptures just to simply show you what we're talking about here. First John chapter 2, verse 15. I told my wife, I said, I don't think I'm going to get, even get to point 2 today. And she goes, I know you won't. I said, thanks for believing in me. She goes, no, I've just seen you do it. And I'm convinced you can't get that far. I was like, thanks, honey. Um, it says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So in other words, it's, uh, what, what are we doing? We're, we're loving the things of God, not the things of this world. Go to Romans chapter 8, verse 7. Goodness. It says, because the carnal mind, that's the flesh, that's the earthly mind. That's the mind that we operate in when we start doing things our own way. The carnal mind is enmity, separation against God, for it's not subject to the laws, neither can it be. And, and it, it, so, so the flesh, it's enmity, it's separation. You cannot operate in the fullness of what God has for you by obeying the carnal mind, your fleshly mind, the part of you that says, I am faithfully and devoted to my opinions. Go to Amos. Yeah, I'll th really throw a loop at you. But we'll head back towards Psalm. Uh, Amos chapter 5. Verse 14. I, I like this. This is simple, but man, it's really clear. It says, seek good, love e and not evil. Sorry, love evil. Seek good and not evil that ye may live. 
And so the Lord God of hosts shall be with you as ye have spoken. What's the importance of that phraseology there? The Lord and all his armies. But if you're in love with the stuff that's of this world, that's the evil. Evil doesn't always mean in scripture like demonic. Okay, I guess it does technically, but you know the 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 Satanist cult type things. That's that's not what we're dealing. Evil can just simply be uh, the the ten the ten spies came back with an evil report. It just went against what God said. So what we can see here is that seek good and not what goes against God's word. Um. So shall you live, so the Lord God of hosts and His armies. Um, where am I at? Shall be with you as, as ye have spoken. Verse 15, hate the evil. Beloved, our mentality has got to be that if God, if it doesn't line up with the things of God, if God didn't tell me, didn't approve of, of doing something, I don't, I, I have to have a hatred towards it. I've got to be fervently and passionately bonded to God, to his ways, to his system and all that he is and love the good and establish judgment in the gate. It may be the Lord God of hosts will be gracious under the remnant of Joseph. And I'm going to leave it there. But, but these scriptures, it's time and time again you know, that, that it just simply says that we cannot be in love with the world system, with the world's ways and get all that God has for us. I, I, go ahead and go back to Psalm 1 now. Hallelujah. I've got to at least get through this. I cannot get stuck here. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1. Now remember the word blessed is the word that means just empowered to increase, empowered to prosper. Um, it, it, it is more than money, but it includes money. Don't get stuck. When you hear prosperity, don't get stuck on money. Some people hear prosperity and they're like, it's just money. It's just money. I just want money. No, God wants you, God wants you enjoying all the symphony. He wants all of it for you. Now, um, and so, so it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. I've heard, I've heard 25,000 different sermons Maybe, maybe give or take a few. Uh, I, I've heard different interpretations of this. I'm just going to give you a little bit of what uh, what I came up with on this, just by looking at the Greek words. Um, walketh is is just your daily walk. Counsel of the ungodly just means what they say. So if you're living according to what the ungodly say and do, you cannot walk in his blessings. It then it goes on. It says "standeth," and that word "standeth" is not is not what we're talking about. That just stand and, and, and stand. It means to tarry. It means to take up kind of residence and stand in a place. So, so in other words, it, it, me, it means this is where I spend most of my time. That's that word "stand." Um, is that I, I, I'm 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 loitering there. Matter of fact, it even presents it to live. But to stand in the way of sinners just is simply telling us that if you are hanging out and living the same path as sinners and the heathen, you're not going to walk in his blessings. You cannot. It's, it's more than that. You cannot walk. There is not. That, that is where famine. That is where destruction. That is where. Uh, that is where. Uh, uh, famine. It, famine. Yeah, dr the dryness of, of weather. Rain misses those areas. Those pathways. What, what is it? What does a. Uh, uh, what does it say about seeds sown on the, on the wayside? The pathway? It's not going to do anything. It's not going to produce. So that's what it's, it's, it's saying. If, if, you are, if you are standing and hanging out and living in the same path as the heathens, doing what the heathens do, you cannot walk in the blessings of God. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't, we don't take trips to them and love on them and minister to them. But we don't operate the way they operate. We operate differently. And the last one it says, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And sitting down, also it means to tarry. It means to live. It, it, it's actually, it, it's actually long-term or dwelling. It's more of an abode. So I've taken up residence um, to those that scoff. 
who, who mock the things of God, who go against the law of God, who, who, who I, I, that's where, that's where I'm, I, I'm going online and I'm, I'm reading their stuff instead of the stuff that glorifies God. And again, you cannot, you absolutely cannot prosper or be blessed in that situation. But, tell, verse 2 starts with but. So, so you can either live in this area where you're not walking in his blessings, where the symphony isn't being played, or you can have your delight, he that delighteth in the Lord, right? You can have your delight in the law of the Lord, and in that law, in those ways, the what he says in his word, in his ways, you meditate therein day and night, and, I believe it's and, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water that bring forth fruit in its season. Its leaves shall not wither, and whatever he does is going to prosper. Beloved, when we take up residence in a passionate, fervent uh, consumption of the things of God and the ways of God, beloved, it places us in the, by the river of living water that produces life in us and produces increase in us and produces glory in us and produces the splendor that God has, has, has given us. It produces all those things and it makes us prosperous in this life. And we're going to get frustrated because it didn't work for us. Beloved, find a little more fervency, devotion, passion, being connected with him in his system and his ways. Let's go one more scripture here and we'll wrap it up. Isaiah 55. Hallelujah. I see the end. Verse 6. Isaiah 55, 6. It says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Understand, and this is just the picture I want you to see, is the way you used to think, quit it. It's not producing for you. Let, let the wicked forsake his ways. Let the unrighteous man his thoughts and return to the Lord. It's just, I can just see, I can, I can feel in me that, that, that statement, return with fervency, with dedication to the Lord. And he will abundantly part, uh, pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways. He thinks different. As the high, heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Remember, we got to fall in love. We love the Lord your God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength. By loving, consuming ourselves with his ways, with his things. And he says, my ways, my things are higher, as the heavens are higher above the earth. But as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be, that proceeds out of my mouth. If I will find a people, are you ready for this? If I will find a people, who will be dedicated and fervently devoted and passionately devoted to my ways, to my thoughts. So shall that word, the word that you grab a hold of, the word of God that you grab a hold of and are fervent and passionate for and follow and do, it will produce in you. It will not return. It, it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I said it. If we will take the words and the ways and the things that he has set aside for us and we will pa get passionate about doing what he tells us to do, 
And again, we're, we're, we're going to see this uh, not about, not just about. Um, I, I have it up here, and I, I, I did not really focus. Well, I, I think I said it earlier. Not just the do, but to passionately do. I feel like some people have been have missed the tithe because some do it, but it's, they're not passionate and fervent about it. What God wants, yes, he, he loves obedience, but he wants the cheerful giver. He wants the prompt to do it giver. I, I like the amplified version in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, where it says, let each one give it as made up on his own mind, purpose in his heart, but not reluctantly or sorrowly or kombucha. Did you get that? For God loves, takes pleasure in, prizes over all things, is unwilling to abandon or do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. What what a statement. I I, I just kind of threw that on at the very end of my putting stuff together. Um, I just put that, but I, that last line, whose heart is in his giving. It's not just bucket chunkers like Pastor Mike says a lot. It's not just saying, well, if I have to, it's going, my goodness, I'm so in love with doing things God's way. I can't wait for the next opportunity I have to sow a seed. I can't wait for the next privilege I have to do something for someone else. I can't wait for the next privilege I have just to spend time meditating in his word. I can't wait for my next opportunity in prayer. I can't wait for my next opportunity just to love on somebody. I can't wait for that next privilege I have of sowing the word of God into someone's life and letting them know Jesus loves them. I can't wait. It, it, it consumes me when we get to that place that's where the release of all he has is now becomes ours amen Steve would you come up to the guitar I usually try to give him the head, head warning but I guess he saw that Jessica wasn't up there, so he can do math just like the rest of us can. So. Hallelujah. I'm so excited about what God's doing in us. Yes, I know the ministry. I, I know the, this ministry is... Um, we've, had, we've had a few years of, of, of um, a running start. Um, I, I would not have looked at us now just being like, it's finally going to hit after this long. But there, there's, an, there's an attempt by the enemy to get us stagnant. Um, you, you know, when you're, when you're moving something big, all you need to do is to stop a little momentum and you, and you can make it really hard. And, you know, I remember back in 2015 when um, we were, we were flo floating into uh, Easter Sunday. And we, I, I, I don't know about you, but I think, I think, I believe in this, in this house. We were so stoked. We just knew that something was going to break. We knew something. There was such a level of expectation. And then the flood came. It's kind of like, you know, here. And I feel like that there's been a lot of those times, those moments 
in this church's history. I'm not picking on anybody. Stuff happens. But about the time that we're we're ready and we're enthused and we're we get going, something happens. Distractions come. And then and then we kind of take take a couple steps back and we're you know we, the momentum's been stopped and we just we're just now we're working we're pushing we're trying to get things moving again and it takes but you know what it does to to get things moving again it takes all of us pushing in the same direction it takes all of us being consumed with the things of God for us to get this boulder going where it needs to go and if we'll just stick to it if we'll stick with it not for a moment, not for a season, not for a time, but just stick with it. When the enemy tries to come in and tries to get us to stop for a second, we're like, no, we're pushing through. Beloved, all the dreams, all the visions, all the things that we've had inside of us will come to pass. But we really need to re-engage. Some of us just need to hit a reset button and say, maybe I've gotten a little lax. I just need to hit the reset button. Some of us just need to all together go, oh, oops, I came unplugged. (laughs) I need to plug back in. But whatever it is, we need to have a fresh, new consumption of the things of God. Let's stand together. your glory fill this house let your praises fill my heart let each vessel of the glory Jesus you alone Heavenly Father this morning as we just wait a moment longer in you with you Lord, there's sometimes, again, I, I think there's some of us that know areas that we just need to get stronger in and better. And, I, and there's some that there's areas that we just need to reset. And I, I believe that. But Lord, I pray that today that you will be the, re, uh, the revealer of the areas that we need to get plugged back in on. If there's areas, Father, that we've let go, you know, I think Pastor Elisa mentioned it on Wednesday in her offering teaching uh, of how we can get so um, just, uh, it can become so common. Just, I I, I throw money in the bucket and I just kind of, you know, I just give and I just, and I don't put much thought or prayer or time into it. That's not, that's not giving with a purpose. You know, just that scripture, let each man give as he has purposed in his heart, not as he just thought at last second to throw in there. And so, Father, you know the areas where we become just a little bit um, passive and not passionate. That we become flexible. Instead of fervent. In other words, we could do it or we didn't have to do it. But instead of fervent, we become cool instead of the flame burning in us. And Father, reveal it to our hearts. And allow us this morning to make a decision. No more. You know, jumping back to last week, no more excuses. No more reasons why I can't. And I just give myself wholly to the things, the ways, and the kingdom of God. Because, Father, I know that as we do it, as we do it individually, it will unleash something individually. But as we do it corporately, it will unleash something that this city can't contain 
And there may be some that says, please stop the rain. And you're going to say, I can't because my people are passionate, fervently devoted, wholeheartedly bonded to me. (laughs) And the city will be changed. This county will be changed. The state will be changed. Hallelujah. We love you. In Jesus' name. Phew. Hallelujah. God's good, isn't he? What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Hallelujah.